Before I get started, I just want to assure you that I'm not opposed to training and have engaged in a variety of effective training programs over the years. As a younger man, I spent time in the military and appreciate the role that training plays in preparing one for the challenges of the world. I also worked as a carpenter, so I understand the role that some forms of training can play in the trades and how useful direct instruction can be when you need to become certified in something like an explosive actuated tool. Also, one of my sons is a professional athlete, so I know how important training and deliberate practice can be. There is a right time and a right place to use training and direct instruction. Before I explain why training and direct instruction can actually limit your ability to learn new technology, I want to relay a recent story that I believe uh, will help support my claims. Earlier this year, we had a snow day, and a face-to-face -face session that I was conducting um, was going to be canceled unless I moved it online. I had been using Zoom for many, many years, and I realized that I could easily move my group of learners into the online environment by using Zoom very, very quickly, and simply prepared um, what I was going to do for that day, sent out a couple of links, and um, engaged my students and encouraged them to participate. And we were able to communicate and collaborate all day without anybody being uncomfortable or overly uncomfortable and without anybody needing very specific training. It just worked. More recently, because of the crisis we're facing, I've, I also had to move a face-to-face -face class fully online because we are no longer able to meet face-to-face. -face. Um, and in moving that class fully online, um, I used the lessons I had learned from that snow day and also my many years of experience working with Zoom and provided an opportunity for my students to um, do a quick little practice session with the tool. Uh, for those who are uncomfortable, they experimented and explored. And then when we did finally meet, um, things went off without any challenges or problems. Also, I've been working with some community organizations um, with a diverse group of people, and Zoom has become a popular tool. And I met with a group, a community group that I've been doing some work with, um, and rather than try to train them how to use Zoom, uh, we simply had a little drop-in session where people who weren't uh, that comfortable with it connected the session. We didn't do anything in particular other than talk and laugh and explore. And in a very short period of time through exploration, everybody realized that Zoom just worked. It went away. Zoom went away and people could communicate and collaborate and enjoy each other's company. I must stress the fact the best technology disappears. It goes away. Now, the community group leaders that I'm working with decided that, well, we want to do this right, so we want to uh, train people how to use this, or at least build a, a couple of web pages and provide a tutorial for people. I actually pushed back on this a little bit, and they ended up asking somebody else to do this for them. So when I met with the uh, individual who built the tutorial page, um, I asked him um, how he felt about it and what he thought and uh, why he had, had done it, and he... Uh, basically confirmed that one of the uh, leaders of the group um, expected, well, that's what you have to do. You have to build a tutorial for those people who don't know how to use the tool. And in our conversation, I very quickly realized that he did this somewhat be begrudgingly, but because he was a professional trainer, building these uh, direct instruction tutorials was something that he had done. And he asked my opinion of the tutorial. And I said, well, listen, if you are a Mac user and you've got a, a very you know, more recent version of Mac, um, your tutorial will work. And then I said, but what about an iPad user? What about an iPhone user? What about an Android user? What about a PC user? And the reason I asked him those questions is that his instructions were really quite good, but they assumed that everybody would be looking at a desktop just like his. And when I asked him about all the other different platforms, and when you start talking about the different types of Android, wow, you can have like the plain versions of Android, you can have a Samsung version, you can have a you know, Google version. You know, there's so many different flavors of these Android devices that it, it becomes quite onerous. And I said, well, listen, if you want to build tutorials, I think you probably need to build another 10 or 12 or maybe even more to cover the entire scope. He very quickly realized that this really wasn't that good of an idea. And he knew from experience that Zoom was easy enough to work with. So rather than build all these tutorials, we just encourage people to explore and to experiment. Through our conversation, this trainer also realized he was fostering a dependence on his instruction rather than encouraging the learner to simply explore and experiment and take the responsibility for working with the tool themselves and learn the tool in a real world setting. 
most people have difficulty with step-by-step -step instructions for technology because we have so many different interfaces, Macs, iPads, iPhones, Androids, tablets, you name it. When you see the step-by-step -step instructions, often they don't match what you see on your screen or your device. It's much better to simply have people explore and experiment with, it, with tools in a real life session, give them the permission to make mistakes and to laugh at themselves and others in a collaborative set, setting. The people who just learn Zoom or another tool are often better guides than the experts who've been using the tools for a long time. Now, why have we fallen into this trap of training? Well, in the old days, or not that long ago, we all have worked with software and systems that are so poorly designed and difficult to use that you have to actually take a course to step you through the process. If you've ever used an ERP system or other sophisticated piece of software, then having direct instructions may be beneficial. Fortunately, most of the tools that we use in an instructional online setting have advanced to the point where you don't need the step-by-step -step training or direct instruction. Yes, you may need to, some help in unlocking some of the more sophisticated features of a learning management system, but for the most part, basic features of Moodle, Blackboard, Desire to Learn, Brightspace are all grasped through a small amount of exploration and experimentation combined with some trial and error. Few people have taken any training to use their iPhone or Android because most of the functions are relatively intuitive and there are only a few options, so trial and error isn't an onerous task. Wherever possible, we've chosen tools that we will recommend in this course that should be easy to use as your cell phone. We will also be pointing you to resources that you can use to help uncover some of the more advanced features. But I do have to warn you that some of the Kaltura videos that we will point you to were created on a PC and they point to Kaltura Integration Blackboard. I've used Kaltura and Moodle Blackboard Desire to Learn, so the videos that the folks provided for the tools were somewhat frustrating because the people who created them assumed that all users would be seeing the same type of a PC desktop and Blackboard that they created the video on. While they indicate that you might see something different depending on your LMS and operating system, they really didn't do a good job of addressing those differences. So I still had to rely on a bit of trial and error and hunting to figure out where the My Media menu is located in Moodle. Yes, the traps of training and direct instruction are all around us. Just consider how frustrating it can be searching for instructions on YouTube. A search will bring up dozens of videos, but unfortunately, as you have found, you may have to watch many videos to find an answer because so many people who created these videos will walk you through their step-by-step -step process that they used on their desktops with their tools and in their context. And all too often, it's different than yours. At some point, you'll just need to explore, experiment, and test out whether or not something will just work. So why wait? Now, don't forget, you don't need to learn technology alone. There are also comes a point where a few minutes in a collaborative session in Zoom, FaceTime, Google Hang Hangout, or on a forum, or even on the phone with a colleague may save you hours of frustration. When I'm hunting for a very specific answer, I'll search the related forums first before I go to YouTube. I recommend that you use the module forums to connect and collaborate with your fellow classmates and participants to find and share technology solutions, tips and recommendations that will make your technology use in the online learning environment much more efficient. One of the biggest advantages of learning online is that you can leverage space and time, meaning you can connect with people all the time and anywhere. So don't ignore this powerful collaborative aspect of the online environment.